Right now at 6, parking concerns near Duluth East High School have neighbors speaking out and city leaders responding. Plus, is the Twin Ports a hotbed for sex trafficking? A new study takes a closer look at the problem. And the verdict is in on a gruesome murder case in Itasca County. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 6. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Edward Moody. Students in Duluth head back to school in just under two weeks. At East High School, where those students will be parking, has some residents concerned. CBS 3's Emma Reckenberg has details. Student parking could be problematic. Emma? Well, if you're a junior or sophomore at East High, you won't get to park in the school lot. Those spots are reserved for seniors, which means these students need to park in some residential areas. It's been this way for years. So Duluth City Council decided it was time to review the allocated areas working with the Duluth Parking Commission. The council has proposed rezoning the area where students would be able to park during the school year. Right now, parts of Gladstone, Cook, Pitt, J, and Dodge Streets along 40th through 44th Avenue East are restricted areas for residential parking permits only. But Council Member Gary Anderson says the proposed parking zone would open these streets for student parking. Well, the decisions to change the district are really being based on data. So that's input from the residents all over the whole parking district. Anderson says some of the proposed parking spaces are pretty far away from the school building itself, so students might decide against parking there anyway. But some neighbors in the area are worried about the safety of the neighborhood with these student drivers, and I spoke with a neighbor who says the area has many young children yeah. in the area, and of course she's concerned for that traffic. Lots of families in that area, um, so certainly a timely story, and we'll be looking more at that, Emma. Uh, the question, though, when can we expect a decision on this actual proposal. So the proposal's on the Monday night City Council agenda and Councilman Anderson says that he anticipates a vote on Monday mm -hmm. night, but the public will have a chance to weigh in on their opinions starting at 7 p.m. during a public hearing. All right, Emma, thank you so much. Well, the University of Minnesota has released a survey aimed at deepening the understanding of sex purchasing in Minnesota. The study analyzed data provided by criminal justice and social workers from Minnesota and surrounding states. They looked at how and why it's happening and who is participating in this illegal activity. CBS 3's Anthony Matt tells us what researchers found here in the Northland. Duluth, known for summer vacations, beautiful sights, and a major inland port. All good things, but they're also contributing factors to a port city harboring a diverse commercial sex market. Because of its size and location, um, there are both youth and women that are brought here for trafficking from other areas. So it's, it is alarming, but it has been happening for quite some time. Lieutenant Dan Chi goes with the Duluth Police Department, says some of the providers or victims participate voluntarily. Others are forced into the industry because of something called survival sex. You talk about clothing, food, shelter. This is why they do what they do. That's their motivation. A lot of fear, a lot of intimidation. Um, so to, for them to actively uh, engage, we, we see that that's not always, that's not most likely the case. Well, experts say there's too much sex purchasing that goes on here in the Twin Ports. They say the client base might not necessarily be based here, as the average distance a person might travel to purchase sex could be as high as 60 miles. They might, they're, they're not going to do these, these um, type of activities within the communities which they live for fear of being exposed. The study found the majority of sex buyers come by the information through the dark web, in-person solicitation, and word of mouth. The program for aid to victims of sexual assaults in Duluth says providers or victims of commercial sex often live in communities of poverty, surrounded by drugs and violence, and have a history of sexual and physical abuse. They don't necessarily recognize that they are being trafficked because of the dynamics of abuse. Um, and a lot of times the shame associated with it, they would rather think that uh, because of the relationship that they are in, they're choosing to be in that relationship. So it's, it's really hard for them to identify that they're actually being taken advantage of. 
Researchers say there are limitations within their research since surveying people who have actually engaged in sex purchasing is nearly impossible. They did find this activity happens in most of Minnesota's cities, regardless of area or size. We'll have the study and more information on our website, cbs3duluth.com. Well, the cause of an abandoned church fire in Duluth's East Hillside remains undetermined. Last Thursday, firefighters responded to a fire on the 900 block of East 3rd Street in Duluth. The building itself is a former church and has been abandoned for several years. According to officials on scene, uh, that is according to officials on scene, the abandonment. Lead investigator and local fire marshal John Otis says the investigation remains open. More than 50 Minnesota lawmakers have signed off on a letter to Governor Mark Dayton urging for no more delays on the Enbridge Line 3 replacement pipeline. According to the letter, the 53 lawmakers are requesting the Public Utilities Commission allow the pipeline replacement project to proceed through the regulatory process without further delays. The call uh, line, they call Line 3 a vital energy infrastructure project for Minnesota and the region. Lawmakers also call the $3 billion investment important to the nation's economy, creating thousands of construction jobs and millions in tax revenue across northern Minnesota. A former Superior City Councilor appeared in court this morning to learn more about his fate. Graham Garfield has been charged with one felony and three misdemeanors related to a domestic case that happened while he was in office. Garfield allegedly pointed a gun at his fiancée after an argument in April. Garfield an announced he would step down from his position in May. He is scheduled to appear in court on September 22nd. Well, after months of trials, a jury has reached a verdict on the murder and beheading of the Iron Range man that happened last summer. A criminal complaint alleges 36-year-old Joseph Thorson of Deer River assaulted 20-year-old David Heyman of Hibbing with a bat, knife, and machete over a rape claim involving Thorson's girlfriend at the time, Kaylin Greniger of Grand Rapids. CBS 3's Leanne Valdez is live from Grand Rapids tonight uh, with the very latest. Leanne, what do you have? Yeah, Edward Real jurors had been deliberating for around three hours. They started at noon and they were deliberating for three hours in the state of Minnesota has found Thorson guilty on all four counts. Thorson has been sentenced to count one, which is premeditated murder in the first degree and the other three counts were not pronounced. So Thorson will be serving a life sentence without parole and both families of Heyman and Thorson were here at the courthouse to hear the verdicts, but none wanted to comment on the verdict. Edward. Leanne, we understand that Kayla Grinegar, Thorson's then girlfriend, will also be serving time? Yeah, that's correct. Greniger is charged with one count of accomplice after the fact of murder and one count of assault. And she has pleaded guilty and will be sentenced sometime in December. All right, that, uh, that ruling coming down this afternoon. Leanne Valdez in Grand Rapids. Thank you, Leanne. Still to come on Live Local CBS3, Texas braces for impact as Hurricane Harvey bears down on the Gulf Coast. Live Local CBS3 Duluth, weekdays at 5 a.m. Texas is gearing up for what could be the most powerful storm to hit the U.S. in 12 years. Weijia Zhang is in Corpus Christi, where Hurricane Harvey could slam ashore within hours. A violent surf is crashing into the Texas Gulf Coast as Hurricane Harvey whips closer to landfall. Forecasters expect it to bring at least 20 inches of rain, in some areas much more, enough to turn towns into islands for days. Brace yourself, prepare for the worst, and, and be ready to try and get out of town as quick as you can. Chris Rickers isn't leaving. I decided to stay to protect my house. Are you worried about your decision to stay? A little bit. Um, I'm mainly worried about my, my kids. Governor Greg Abbott is pushing everyone to head inland. You have the power and the ability right now to be able to avoid being stuck into a search and rescue situation if you make the decision to get out of harm's way before it is too late. Meteorologists expect the storm to be a Category 3 hurricane as it makes land. That would mean winds topping 115 miles per hour. 
Seven coastal counties from here in Corpus Christi to Galveston Island have ordered mandatory evacuations. Officials say they cannot guarantee rescues for people who stay behind. This retirement home loaded residents for the ride to Austin. I would have preferred to hunker down at home, but uh, my concerns are for the people of Corpus Christi and our city. The National Weather Service says the winds could be life-threatening, but that the greatest threat is from potentially catastrophic flooding. Weijia Jang, CBS News, Corpus Christi, Texas. In the worst-case scenario, forecasters say some locations may be uninhabitable for weeks, if not months. Officials with the Duluth Red Cross say four people from northern Minnesota will leave this weekend to help with hurricane recovery efforts in Texas. An emergency response vehicle will be leaving Duluth early Sunday morning and volunteers say they're ready to help. I get a great feeling. Uh, I'm there. These people are just traumatic. You know, they've lost everything or they're losing in the process of losing everything uh, with the flooding or their tornadoes or whatever. So you're there. You're their rock. They come to you. They need something. You can get it for them. Red Cross officials say this storm is expected to generate as large of a Red Cross response as Hurricane Sandy did in 2012. It's day three of Tribute Fest at Bayfront Festival Park, but tomorrow there will be a major change in venue. Officials with the festival announced today that due to the impending inclement weather, the festival will go on, but it will be moved to the Sites Arena. Sites Arena is located next to Clyde Iron on 30th Avenue West. Doors will open tomorrow at 11 a.m. with music starting at noon. I saw a post on Facebook about mm -hmm. Tribute Fest the other day, and it was the, um, the tribute to Daft Punk. Yes. And I thought they were here in Duluth at first. I was like, wait, what are they doing here? <laughs> yeah, but it was just the tribute to them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, moving it inside for tomorrow, so those storms are looking pretty pretty decent. Well, the yeah. charts today show we have a 100% chance of rain for our region on yeah. Saturday. And it's not because of the northern fringes of the hurricane down in Texas. We have our own low pressure systems to deal with. But either way, we're going to get wet. Not as wet as folks down south, though, luckily. And we'll talk about how much rain could be coming down for the weekend right after the break. CBS3 Skycam is brought to you by Kohler Toyota. Be sure to check out our mobile site, where shopping for a new vehicle is at your fingertips at KohlerToyota.com. Modernize your living room by choosing sofas and lamps with USB outlets. Margarita time. <laughs> Save big and receive five-year financing during the Labor Day sale at Schneiderman's Furniture. Exactly. Take on those big chores around your property with a Kubota B-Series four-wheel drive tractor. They can handle everything from light construction and landscape work to helping you with chores around your hobby farm. With a variety of models and a host of performance-enhancing upgrades and attachments, the B-Series delivers efficiency, power, and comfort. So take on those big chores. See your local Kubota dealer today. Right now at Menards, get an 11% rebate on everything, even sale prices. Update your home's interior with a new ceiling fan. All turn-of-the-century ceiling fans are on sale, plus an 11% rebate. The Ashton fan with brush nickel finish and etched opal glass includes a remote. 9701 after sale price and rebate. Stop waiting and start saving with an 11% rebate on everything, even sale prices, now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. You each drive a Ford pickup, right? Yes, yes, sir. I'm gonna show you a next generation pickup. Awesome, let's do this. The bed is made of high strength steel, which is less susceptible to punctures than aluminum. The stronger, the better. And best of all, this new truck is actually... <laughs> oh, 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 the current Chevy Silverado. It's the Chevy Summer Drive. Get a total value of $9,600. Plus, current Chevy owners and lessees get an additional $1,500 cash allowance on this Silverado All-Star. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Purchase high-tech pillows to help keep you cool during the night. What? No more pillow fridge? No more pillow fridge. <laughs> no more pillow fridge. Save up to $600 when you add a power base on all beauty rest mattresses during the Labor Day sale at Schneiderman's Furniture. Exactly. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by Lulich Implement. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. 
Well, folks in Texas indeed dealing with a tropical cyclone this weekend. Here in our neck of the woods, we're dealing with two extra tropical cyclones. Extra meaning they're outside of the tropics. Yeah, we could also call them run-of-the-mill low pressure systems. But with two of them casting a net over the region, well, the rain chance is 100% for our Saturday. And it's 50% on Sunday. But it still looks like, yeah, it's going to dry up and time to get back to work come Monday. So here's a look at the current Doppler and satellite map. Let's go into that full screen. And we have one low pressure system to our southwest and we have another one that's up towards our northwest and in between is a surface trough of lower pressure and we're starting to see the rain in the North Dakota area, South Dakota as well. Once we get towards midnight tonight, our rain chance bumps up to about 50% and then tomorrow when day dawns goes towards 100%. We'll show you estimated rain totals here in just a little bit. But right now, let's take a look at the current conditions at the airport in Duluth. 61 degrees, the temperature there, still cooler than normal, but we could get back towards normal as early as Monday. Relative humidity, that right now is 78%. Easterly to southeasterly winds, well, they're going 10 miles per hour, and wind directions and speeds will be like that, similar to that, through tomorrow. Air pressure right now, 30.22 at the surface, 1,023 millibars, that's on the higher side, but those two low pressure systems and their associated trough will do their best to knock our barometer readings down both for Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures right now, 67 in Watersmead. Ironwood perked up to 70, one of our better temps here today. 61 Hayward, 65 Ashland, 64 in Superior, upper 50s towards Moose Lake, low 60s in Silver Bay. Iron range temperatures around 65 degrees, whether you're in Hibbing or towards the Ely area. International Falls at 70 right now. High temps tomorrow, likely once again running uh, cool than normal. Normal's around 72, 73. Tomorrow I think we'll top out between 60 and 65. The cloud cover we get tomorrow, it will be thick. We'll be keeping the sky on the gray side. Well, let's start down towards Texas and there's Harvey. Category 3 hurricane, 120 mile per hour winds. That's expected to bring two to three feet of rain for folks down there. But here in our part of the country, yeah, here's the two low pressure systems. The run of the mill migratory low pressure systems that are coming our way. There's that trough. 100% rain chance for Saturday, like I mentioned. Could spill into Sunday as well. And rain totals, yeah, it looks like fairly juicy by our standards. Most towns could run a half inch to an inch of rain and a little low bubbling up towards uh, places like Moose Lake and Hayward just might bring between one and two inches. But there should be a drying period coming our way and we'll show you that with the forecast for tonight in Minnesota. Look for your low temps to go 49 to 54. 50-50 shot at showers roughly around midnight. 30% for Wisconsin and Michigan. Low temps there 50 to 53. And for tomorrow, there's that cool trend again. Wisconsin, Michigan, high temps with rain, 62 to 64. Minnesotans get the rain too with highs from 59 by the lake to 63 for the inland areas. And we deal with showers kicking around through Sunday. But Monday, maybe not be overly sunny, Edward, but we'll at least get partly sunny and partly warmer, high of 70 than normal. 73 on Tuesday, 75 could come our way for Wednesday. Then we do step back a bit for Thursday and Friday. 70 to 73, that's still pretty close to normal. But then rain chances do return for those two days, 30% shots at scattered showers. All right, maybe we'll get out Monday and Tuesday, hunker down Saturday and Sunday, watch yeah. some movies inside. Yeah. Or, heaven forbid, clean the house. <laughs> <laughs> Say it ain't so, Dave. Or the garage. That to-do list is growing. Mm. Right. All right, thanks, Dave. <laughs> Hey, Corey Kaiser's here with a look at sports, and uh, it's Friday Night Football. It is yeah. another edition. We love it. It's finally back in the Northland. So tonight, Wisconsin teams, they're entering week two of their season, and right here in our backyard, that includes the Superior Spartans, who are preparing for their home opener. But over here in Minnesota, it's zero week for a handful of teams featuring the two Harbors Agates. We will preview those games coming up next in sports. Get ready for a doubleheader of Indie Rock Legends with Soul Asylum and Jim Blossoms. One laugh and hello, sensitive bladder. So I tried Always Discreet. I didn't think protection this thin could work, but the super absorbent core turns liquid to gel. So it's out of sight and out of mind. Always Discreet for bladder leaks. Sanja 2 Harbors, where the cars are. Click, call, and save on deals like this 2010 Chevy Colorado for only $95.50 or this 2011 Ford F-150 4x4 for just 13250 dollars during the last week of the summer closeout. Sanju.com and Sanju 2 Harbors, where the cars are. Live, local, CBS3 Duluth, weekdays at 5 a.m. Now, CBS3 Sports with Barrett Anderson.
Welcome back, everyone. I'm Corey Kaiser. Barrett Anderson is on assignment, so she'll be back here at 10. And talking about football, the two Harbors football team couldn't wait for summer to be over and football season to begin. And tonight, their wish will finally be granted. The Agates will host their first opponent tonight, the Crosby Ironton Rangers, for zero week of the new season. Two Harbors finished the 2016 season 6-4 and four overall, the Rangers 7-3. and three. And these two teams haven't faced each other in nearly nine years, and a lot has changed since then, so the Agates have been preparing for the big night. We've been doing a lot of like scouting reports on them, and they have a good team and everything, but we have a great group of guys over here. A lot of uh, us are hungry. We put a lot of time, like I said, in the offseason in the weight room. You know, uh, getting ready just for this you know, first game. You know, it'll kind of get the nerves out for all of us, too, so that'll be nice. Over the state line, Wisconsin teams already have one week under their belts coming into tonight's games, and one of those teams being the Superior Spartans. Superior will go head-to-head -head with the Somerset Spartans in their home opener tonight. Big Blue is coming off a 20-10 win over Merrill, and Somerset, though, took an L. But Superior knows what Somerset is capable of, a three-time state champion and three-time runner-up since 2004. So the Spartans say being at home will be the key asset tonight. It means a lot. It gives everybody, everybody gets hyped up. Big confidence booster coming out at home and all the fans, just everybody makes it great. To be able to play at home, it's, it's a special thing. And with the facilities we have here, it makes it even more special. And we get great crowds every Friday night that we are at home. And it's a very fun atmosphere. Also tonight, Northwestern will also be seeing action on their home turf for the first time this season versus Osceola. Both teams are coming in 1-0. and Last week, the Tigers took a W from Ashland by the final 14-8. to And we will have the highlights from all of the three games we just talked about right back here at 10. And in soccer today, season opener for the Grand Rapids and Duluth Marshall girls. Early stages, Marshall's Victoria Thorson with the through ball to Emily Lemker. She has an open net, but Justin Diaz comes up and deflects the shot. Several minutes later, Thorson breaks the scoreless tie. She blasts one from outside the box over the head of Diaz, 1-0 Hilltoppers. Then just before the half, a penalty kick for Lemker. She bends it into the corner to make it 2-0. Duluth Marshall wins this one 6-0. And lastly, in hoops, while the Minnesota Lynx have already clinched a playoff spot last month, tonight's game will pave the rest of their playoff path. The Lynx are playing on the road against one of their final five opponents of the regular season, the San Antonio Stars. A win tonight for Minnesota will clinch home court advantage in the semifinals of the playoffs. And the Lynx, it looks looking good for them. They beat the Stars in their past two meetings earlier this season. And so this game just got started at 6, and last I checked, it is nearing the end of the first quarter. Lynx are trailing the Stars 16 to 11. We will have that full score later on today. So right back here at 10, we will have that for you, and that will do it for Sports Now. Right back to you, Edward. All right, thanks, Corey. We'll be right back. Put some fun in your life with Duluth Dodge. We're bigger, bolder, and better. Family owned for over 25 years, we offer the best price, best service, and best selection. We have the largest Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram inventory in the area. Ram power has never looked so good. Put some fun in your life. Go to DuluthDodge.com or visit our showroom to find the ride of your life during the summer clearance event. At Super One, you'll find more than just great choices at low prices. You'll find friendly faces like us, working hard to save you money. Super One has a tireless commitment to quality and freshness and a goal of delivering five-star service to every customer to bring the absolute best value to your shopping experience. Check out these specials available at all Super One locations going on now. So stop into the Super One Foods right in your neighborhood. Super One Foods, serving you low prices and better choices. Attention all auto and RV owners, our loss is your gain at Link Ford and RV in Minot. This recent hailstorm caused minimal damage to hundreds of autos and RVs. The damage is minor, but the savings are huge. Nearly $7 million in inventory, including Jayco Motorhomes and Tobles, already discounted $20,000, and new F-150s with savings of $10,500, plus huge hail discounts. There may never be a better time for you to buy than right now during this hail sale. At Link Ford and RV in Minot, your family's auto and RV dealer. Live, local, CBS3 Duluth, weekdays at 5 a.m. At Miller Hill Subaru, we know there's nothing up north 
that a Subaru can't handle. Even biking trips with the whole family. Lease an all-new Subaru Outback during the A Lot to Love event. Miller Hill Subaru, for where we live. Men's wardrobe provided by Mainstream Fashions for Men. Mainstream is your wedding headquarters. Downtown Duluth. Tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10, we're following the latest development on Hurricane Harvey and the devastation experts are saying it's about to unleash on Texas's Gulf Coast. We'll have more on the megastorm and the latest from those feeling or fleeing, excuse me, its path. I think they're doing both. And before we go, 30 sushi chefs from 15 nations battled today in Tokyo for the title of the most creative sushi plate of the year. The annual competition World Sushi Cup in Japan was held on the sidelines of a seafood expo in Tokyo. A Russian chef who runs a restaurant in Norway won first place at the two-day competition. It was his third try after two unsuccessful bids for the title, sign me up to be a judge. Can I eat all of that? Right? Just, yeah. Just put it all here. A shrimp we'll, tempura roll for one, please. We'll let you know what's good. <laughs> I might have sushi tonight, yeah. Lutefisk right. sushi. Lutefisk sushi. Oh. <laughs> like, Combinize, combine Norway and... I might pass on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some, yeah. some folks would hope we could pass on the rain, but yeah. we have a 100% chance for it on Saturday. Could be a soaker with a half inch or so for many towns, but by Monday, a little reward. We get a high temp of 70 and a little sunshine. Uh, Ludafis is one of those once in a lifetime things. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We'll see you at 10, everybody. Bye. <laughs> CBS 3 closed captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health. Here with you from Spooner to International Falls. Go to EssentiaHealth.org to find a clinic or hospital near you. All brand name sandals are now 40 to 60% off. North. Wednesday night.